Interstitial lung disease, also known as diffuse parenchymal lung disease, are a group of disorders based on similar clinical, radiographic, physiologic, and pathologic changes. When people think about interstitial lung disease, they think about fibrosis, restriction in the lungs. And there are many, many causes of interstitial lung disease. So interstitial lung disease or diffuse parenchymal lung disease is more of an umbrella term. Interstitial means the interstitium, which is where the disease process often begins. The interstitium is between the alveoli and capillaries of the lung. Here, interstitial fibroblasts produce lots of products, such as collagen, and they proliferate, producing more collagen and extracellular uh, matrix substances. These interstitial changes is what causes the restrictive pattern. However, in reality, the disease affects more than the interstitium. It affects the alveolar walls and often the related small airways and distal pulmonary vasculature. And so diffuse parenchymal lung disease is more appropriate uh, name of the disease rather than interstitial lung disease. And again, these interstitial changes causes an abnormality in gas exchange. So you have an impairment in gas exchange between oxygen and carbon dioxide. Like other lung diseases, these disorders present primarily with shortness of breath, usually chronic over weeks to months, without response to initial treatment of puffers. It's associated with a non-productive cough. If there's clinical suspicion of uh, diffuse parenchymal lung disease, they should undergo full pulmonary function test. You want to identify a restrictive lung disease, which is identified by a reduced total lung capacity and vital capacity. You also want to check the DLCO, which would be low. The DLCO is the diffusing capacity of the lung for carbon monoxide. It measures the ability of the lungs to transfer gas from inhaled air to the red blood cells in pulmonary capillaries. A low DLCO combined with reduced lung volumes suggests diffuse parenchymal lung disease. A low DLCO because gas is unable to transfer through the diseased alveoli, interstitium, and capillaries. A normal DLCO associated with low lung volumes is consistent with an extra pulmonary cause of restriction. Extra pulmonary causes of restriction means something outside the lung causing restriction of the lung, so restricting the lungs to expand. And this includes obesity, pleural effusion, or pleural thickening, neuromuscular weakness, or kyphosis, as well as many other causes. A normal chest radiograph or chest x-ray does not rule out diffuse parenchymal lung disease. The diagnosis of diffuse parenchymal lung disease can often be made based on high-resolution CT without a lung biopsy. So high-res CT of the chest is gold standard, you can say. As mentioned, diffuse parenchymal lung disease is an umbrella term because there's so many causes, but the hallmark is the same. You know, you have the restrictive pattern with the reduced DLCO. The diffuse parenchymal lung disease are divided into those that are associated with a known cause of diffuse parenchymal lung disease or unknown cause of diffuse parenchymal lung disease or weird and wonderful rare causes. So let's look at each of these in a bit more detail. So known causes of diffuse parenchymal lung disease include drug-induced, smoking-related, radiation-induced uh, interstitial changes, chronic aspiration, secondary from, let's just say, gastroesophageal reflux, pneumoconiosis, which is like worker's lung, connective tissue disease, including, you know, SLE, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, scleroderma, hypersensitivity pneumonitis, which is essentially a response to an allergen, so it's a hypersensitivity reaction. 
Then you have the unknown causes of diffuse parenchymal lung disease. Uh, and this includes idiopathic interstitial pneumonia, which comprise of three main ones. Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, which is a classic honeycomb appearance on CT chest. Acute interstitial pneumonia and cryptogenic organizing pneumonia, which looks like just pneumonia in both lungs, patchy all throughout, uh, subplural. Then you have sarcoidosis, which can present as a diffuse parenchymal lung disease as in a late stage. And this is the classic uh, mediastinal lymphadenopathy. Finally, you have the rare causes of diffuse parenchymal lung disease with well-defined features. This include lymphangioleomyomatosis, esophilic pneumonia, pulmonary alveolar protein, Tenosis, pulmonary Langerhans cell histiocytosis or histiocytosis X. And there are many other types of diffuse parenchymal lung disease, which I've not mentioned, but these are the main ones. I hope to create videos on uh, the main diffuse parenchymal lung disease uh, soon. Some high yield points to remember when approaching diffuse parenchymal lung disease or interstitial lung disease or any other lung disease for that matter, is to consider which areas of the lungs these disease affects. Because some uh, of these lung diseases affect, have an upper lobe predominance, and other diseases have a lower lobe uh, pre predominant uh, disease. So let's look at upper lobe predominant disease. With this, you can remember the different causes by the acronym BREASTS. So B is for berylosis, which is a type of pneumoconiosis. R is for radiation fibrosis. E is for eosinophilic pneumonia, as well as hypersensitivity pneumonia, which have eosinophils. A is for allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, as well as ankylosing spondylitis, which is a type of rheumatic connective tissue disease. S is for sarcoidosis. T is for tuberculosis. Remember, sarcoidosis is typically mediastinal, but it also has upper lobe predominance. S is for silicosis. And again, this holds true for majority of pneumoconiosis, that they have upper lobe predominance. Uh, interestingly, they also present with small nodules typically in the upper lobes. For lower lobe predominant disease, you can remember the different causes by the acronym AIDS. So A is for asbestosis. I is for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, which is the classic honeycomb changes on CT chest. D is for drug-induced fibrosis. And there's three to uh, remember. Amiodarone, nitrofurantoin, and methotrexate. S is for scleroderma and other connective tissue disease. Remember that ankylosing spondylitis is the only one of the rheumatic diseases that typically affects the upper lobes, upper zones of the lungs. So breasts for upper uh, lobe predominant disease and AIDS for lower lobe predominant disease. The clinical manifestation of diffuse parenchymal lung disease is worsening dyspnea with associated, usually non-productive cough. They may have features of connective tissue disease, so features of scleroderma, systemic lupus erythematosus, or rheumatic, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. It's important to also know the occupational history as well as exposure history, which can help identify potential causes of coal worker's lung or other pneumoconiosis, as well as exposure to birds and pets, which may help diagnose hypersensitivity pneumonitis, which is the allergic response. Medication history is also important, such as amiodarone causing interstitial lung disease. On examination, lung sounds are variable. They can be normal, you can have a wheeze, they can be, uh, you can have Velcro inspiratory crackles, which are pathognomonic for classic idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Usually with diffuse parenchymal lung disease, patients develop some form of pulmonary hypertension. And so they can have features of right heart strain or heart failure. And this typically represents severe disease. You can imagine a fibrosed lung. This will increase pressure in the pulmonary capillaries, which means it will increase pressure in the pulmonary arteries, which will lead to increased pressure on the right side of the heart, so right 
uh, heart strain. And this is really what pulmonary hypertension is. So features of pulmonary hypertension and right heart failure include a raised JVP, peripheral edema, a loud P2, as well as an S3 heart sound. Some diffuse parenchyma lung disease have features of clubbing, namely idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. However, clubbing is not specific for diffuse parenchyma lung disease. Other causes of clubbing include cystic fibrosis, cyanotic heart disease, cancer of the lungs and pleura, as well as colitis, the inflammatory bowel disease. Patients may have borderline normal pulse oximetry at rest. But on ambulation, um, a 4% drop is consistent with uh, really a diffusion limitation. Finally, the six minute walk test is a useful test to assess functional status in patients with diffuse parenchyma lung disease and to check response to any treatment. So you can do the six minute walk test again after treatment to check if they've improved. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video on an overview of diffuse parenchyma lung disease. Um, there will be some links to watch uh, the specific causes of diffuse uh, parenchyma lung disease in more detail. Thank you.